uh, my name is Sam Humphreys. Welcome to my talk called I Am Root Cause Analysis. Very excited to be speaking here as part of Techno Day. Uh, and thank you for attending the talk. I know there's a lot of choice today and I'm really looking forward to seeing a lot of the talks as well. So quick introduction to me. Uh, I am currently a security strategist at Exabeam. I've been doing security forever, it feels. And um, my, not actually my job title, but certainly how I felt at one of my previous companies was the Chief Apology Officer. Now, I did spend three and a half years working in incident response. Uh, part of that was internal to the company, part of it was helping customers. So uh, this is relevant to something that I'll tell you about later on. Um, in my spare time, <laughs> when I'm invited to dinner parties, which is not now, um, old school malware is definitely a favourite topic. And I write and I talk far too much. And if you'd like to find me on Twitter, that's where I am. Um, this is me. This is not me. This is um, a comic author and artist called Sam Humphreys, who weirdly has blocked me on Twitter. So if you happen to be watching this, Sam Humphreys, please let's be friends. All right, on with the show. In the synopsis for the talk, there was the obligatory Einstein quote. And I think this is relevant very much to the reason why you would think about doing root cause analysis. If you keep seeing the same results from the same sorts of incidents over and over again, and you see the same sorts of problems, it's unlikely you're going to see change. Now, Einstein said a lot in his life, an awful lot, uh, many, many smart things. I think this quote's actually more relevant both to uh, root cause analysis and also to International Women's Day and Techno Day. Uh, this, I think, applies to diversity and the importance of it, but also the importance of collaboration when you're trying to really isolate the cause of a problem and then do something about it. So thank you, Einstein, for saying many clever things, uh, especially ones that are relevant to why we're here today. So some promises were indeed made. Um, again, from the synopsis, this is what we'll be going through. There will be bonus items. Just an important call out, this is not a full Six Sigma Black Belt training course. We only have about an hour and those things do take a bit longer. But hopefully when you come out the other side of this, if there's one thing that you take away, it's not the feeling of wanting to run away screaming. If someone says to you, we're going to be doing a root cause analysis and you're on the squad. And maybe today you work for an organisation where you do these pretty well. It may be that you work for an organisation where you don't do them pretty well. Uh, but I hope that you take something away from this because um, I've lived through many, many, many of these and I've seen them done well and I've seen them done not so well. So um, as we go through, hopefully there'll be even one or two things that you take away, even if you're used to doing these as part of your job. And um, indeed, <laughs> there will be some good stories and definitely some great memes, if nothing else. So why do we do RCAs in the first place? And why should we do them? Um, if they're done right, they are super beneficial. They help you learn from something that went wrong. Um, an incident or a problem, if you're an idle person, you're gonna be screaming problem at the screen, but something, something goes horrifically wrong. You want to understand what happens and you want to do something positive to change that and stop it from happening again. I think another huge benefit from doing RCAs properly is that you have this amazing cross-team collaboration. Silos are a big problem um, in technology, I think beyond technology as well. But if you do this correctly, you'll have uh, representation from a bunch of different teams and you'll work together to try and understand and solve a problem rather than, rather than trying to solve it in a vacuum. One other thing that's important to note is that you don't just have to do root cause analysis when something goes wrong. So we'll save that little nugget for the end. So the definition of root cause analysis, um, I, I did look at the Wikipedia one to throw it up here just to see what Wikipedia had to say. Um, and the article has got more warnings on it than one of the, most of the ones I've seen. Um, some of the updates required go quite a long way back. So uh, maybe I'll take that as an action at the end of this to go and help the Wikipedia article. But really they're there to help you understand the true cause of a problem, hopefully understanding what you need to change so you don't see it again find the solutions to fix that, implement them, and then validate the results. This is how it should work in theory. They don't always go this well. 
ultimately, if you are doing root cause analysis, be it for um, you're, you're building something, you're in a kind of DevOps situation, you're probably more used to seeing these. Um, insecurity, they, they do happen, but less so. And this is really what I want to focus on today. But ultimately, root cause analysis and doing it right is a commitment. And it's a commitment to continuous improvement. And that's the thing we all want. All right, it's story time. So grab a cup of tea or coffee or wine or indeed water. Um, get comfort, comfy. And I'd like to share with you a story of woe from my life. Um, but it's a good example, I think, of what not to do. So um, theoretically, once upon a time, there was a chief apology officer. Um, and as, as she mentioned before, <laughs> this theoretical chief apology officer I had to look after a bunch of things, internal incidents and external customer incidents. Now, doing RCAs for those is slightly different. Um, from the external point of view, definitely more being involved than running the whole thing, as it should be. Um, but on the inside, especially in the earlier days, I think, of doing RCAs at that organisation, um, they weren't really properly owned. Um, and as you'll see in a moment, they weren't particularly well done. I will say things got a lot better, so this isn't how things are today. But there were certainly incidents that um, said CAO's company caused for security customers. Um, a lot of products in the security space have regular updates. And in many cases, if it's an endpoint, those updates will either change or remove code from a machine, which provides lots of opportunity, as well as to remove bad stuff from machines that you don't want to accidentally sometimes remove stuff that you do need. And unfortunately, false positives and the impact of those has been really the bane of security since, since security. So um, RCAs were fairly common. There are certainly at said company, series of four numbers that apply to those updates that fill people who were there with horror <laughs> if they were around at the time. And certainly the customers will remember them as well. One day um, I'm out in India visiting my team and uh, my, my boss's boss came to see me and he presented me, not literally with a spreadsheet, but said, look, I've got something I need you to do. Um, we kept seeing these same sort of quality issues come up over and over again. And he said, right, we've got this spreadsheet. We've put every bit of information from every single RCA into this spreadsheet. So it was just a huge document. There was at least 15 RCAs dumped in this thing. Um, and they were all associated to perceived or actual quality issues. And they kept happening. So he said to me, right, I need you to go through this, look for commonalities, because it's clearly things still aren't right. And without exaggeration, it took hours and hours and hours to go through this document. Net net, a lot of them boiled down to the same kind of things. Um, there were definitely some process issues for sure. Um, there were things down to a lack of investment. Um, there were things down to systems growing organically for a long time and people not really understanding how they were linked. But a huge, huge chunk of this was not following through the actions that had been specified every time we'd gone through the RCA process. And it was just right on with business as usual. Off we go. So I complete the mega RCA and I take it back to said boss's boss. And this is what he said. Sam. This is amazing. No one will ever read it. Today, you eat at Leela. Let's just take that apart for a second. So I spent hours on this thing. He's told me it's actually now pointless and has served a strange purpose where it's so complicated, nothing will happen. So from my perspective, this isn't great. And also, I have no idea what a Leela is or where, where to go to get one. And I didn't really want to ask because I was still kind of reeling from the first bit. So anyway, this is a Leela. This is Leela Palace in Bangalore. Um, and it is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. This, you know, in one respect, this turned out really nice. The next day, two out of three of these are my pictures. Um, we went to this amazing restaurant in a palace, had lunch, and it was because I'd put together a document that he felt that it was so complicated no one would read. Um, you can guess the end result is that the quality issues didn't get resolved anywhere near that time. It took it took, I had to say, another couple of years before really um, somebody got to grips with it and properly understood what was going on. So big investment in quality actually solved a lot of problems. But 
giving someone free lunch, let's say. So if you are a manager or someone who is in charge of folks who are on the hook for RCAs, please don't reward them for RCAs that will never be read. OK, so stories of weather side. When should you do an RCA? Um, some of these will apply beyond cybersecurity for sure. So it can be a high severity incident, call it incident problem event, depending on which school of thought you come from. A big bad thing happens that has an impact, be that to a service you provide externally, internally, um, something that affects your customers. Um, it can be the data breach. And I know now if we look at compliance, you know, if you are unfortunate enough to get hit by a data breach, there is a whole lot of investigation that you need to do. But understanding why something has happened doesn't always necessarily meet those compliance re, um, remits that you have. So big data breach could be something wide scale or significant in cybersecurity. Or also, if you keep seeing the same type of thing happening over and over again, and this is where my ITIL friends will get very excited, if you keep seeing the same sort of incident, that will roll into a problem. There's generally a problem behind that incident that needs solving, so that's a good time to do an RCA. So let's dig a little further on cybersecurity RCAs. Now, if you uh, if you sit in front of a SIM all day and or you're used to getting lots of security alerts, please don't panic. It doesn't mean that every single thing that comes through, you now need to be going to your boss and saying, right, we should do an RCA. Not true. Um, it really has to be those kind of the mega events or something that happens a lot. Um, Security people watching this will know this. If you just by completing an RCA doesn't mean that um, everything will be fine forever and a day. That's unfortunately not true. But it should help you be less of a target or at least harder to attack. And those things are important. Ultimately, putting in cybersecurity solutions and processes and people are there to make things harder for your adversaries. We're never going to get rid of, of them 100%. Uh, I talked about compliance just briefly. This should not be your main driver for doing RCAs. Compliance, a lot of the time, asks you to investigate and understand what happened. Um, it's expected in many cases that you're going to put something in place to, um, to solve that from happening. We can look at a bunch of these. If you pop over to the ICO's website, as a, for example, have a look at Cathay Pacific. It's, um, not that I wish to, to completely throw them under the bus. There was a lot of things that went into that breach. But um, that's an example of indeed many. And indeed, pick your breach du jour, because there's probably one happening right now as we're talking. Other important things, the cybersecurity team should not own the RCA process. They can be part of it, but they shouldn't own it. In fact, it's more important a lot of the times that the owner is separate from the problem, because then they are less emotionally invested in what went wrong and less worried that they're going to get blamed. Very important to note that RCA shouldn't be about blame. Uh, they should really be about this commitment to continuous improvement, about collaboration, and about trying to stop things from happening again. So definitely a positive, blame is not the game. However, if you've ever worked on a big security incident, you'll know this. Um, and again, you can widen this out to other incidents in technology. Once you finally get to the end of the rainbow of what's gone wrong, and you may have worked days, you may have worked weeks into this thing, it may not feel like the thing you want to do most is to get back into a situation where you're going to relive the thing immediately and talk about what happened. It's a bit kind of like watching a car crash again in slow motion. Um, I don't know if there's something a bit wrong with me. There might be. Personally, I find the RCA bit the best because you're not in the middle of an incident anymore. Hopefully, hopefully you haven't got something else going on. Um, you're now out the other side. You've hopefully had some rest and then you can actually get into doing something positive rather than be um, pretty much on fire trying to deal with something that's going horribly wrong around you. It's time for some slide art. OK, most people in security, I'm sure, will have seen this at some point. <clears throat> this is the standard cycle of incident response. There are slight different variations on a theme. Sometimes Graph does that, but here we go. It goes round. Your RCA should fit in round about here. Lessons learned, back into the preparation. Now, maybe off to one side is a different way to think about it, but the actions that, that come out of a root cause analysis should really form the new preparation side of things, be they process, people, technology, training. We'll get into some of the different actions later on. But 
sometimes lessons learned is kind of skipped a little bit. Um, and this is what happens. Thing goes wrong. And it's resolved. And then it happens again and again and again and again and again. And it's basically groundhog incident. I said earlier, good thing that you might want to look at RCA is if you keep getting repeat incidents, then something's not quite right here. And there are certainly countermeasures and activities that you can put into place to, uh, to at least lighten the load and hopefully actually solve these things from happening. And again, this is a kind of another way of looking at it. This is the, what tends to happen more is you do your preparation, you find something, you contain it, you stop it, you recover, and then you go straight back to what you were doing. Um, I've seen this happen on a small scale. So something happens on a laptop, you get say a ransomware infection, laptop gets wiped, gives back to user, job done. Now, in many ways, a lot of teams will say, well, we have to do it that way because we need to get people up and running. But if it keeps happening, then there's something else that's, that, that needs to be addressed. So whilst it says mayor here, if this is what you're doing day to day, you're not the only ones. But there are times where you need to stop and add that extra extra section back in to it's going to help you be better at your job because you're not going to be fighting the same fire over and over again. Here's an example from a, um, a real, this is a real life ex example for sure. Uh, the, the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Uh, if you're watching this in future and you've now decided that you are starting a bank called Banking at Bankface, this is not about you. This is a historical event and it's just something that really happened. So bank I was working with were hit with a large scale malware attack. It was, um, this is back, I told you I was an old school malware aficionado. Um, it was Sality, so it was something that infected executable files across the machines, and it would try and spread pretty rapidly across the network. It would also try and um, disable antivirus software or endpoint protection. And it was a pig to clean up, not going to lie. Um, from an outbreak response perspective, as a self-confessed disaster junkie, I quite like dealing with these, but it's very easy to say when it's not your network. Um, on the other side, it's not fun. It can be very, very difficult. And if you don't follow all of the steps that are recommended to clean this thing up, um, it spreads and spreads and spreads and updates itself and spreads some more. So it's it's pretty bad. So they were seeing this across multiple servers, workstations. It, it, it was spreading very rapidly. And unfortunately, because some of the cleanup procedures were a bit brutal and involved reboots, and everyone loves rebooting a server, best thing ever, um the business was saying no to the security team they weren't letting them follow the cleanup procedures so this thing got worse and worse and worse to the point the servers now ground to a halt and the customers were impacted unfortunately fortunately if there's a fortunately in this um it didn't impact every single server they had um they had a lot so it's a good thing that there was some there was some segmentation and it wasn't spreading everywhere but it was still it was enough to impact customer service in the middle of the outbreak, they decided to start the RCA process, which from my perspective, isn't the best thing to do because you're still in the middle of it. You're fighting fires. You also need people involved who are in the middle of dealing with this um, that really need to be at the end. And also the full impact is not known if you're in the middle of the attack. So this wasn't great, but uh, they did one and that's good, um, but it wasn't as successful as it could have been. They had data missing from the investigation as well. Um, partly because they'd started too early and partly because they didn't really consider what would be important to, to involve in that process. Hence the solution they decided wasn't fully implemented. Again, there was pushback from the business on some of these things. It wasn't really a true collaboration and uh, no prize for guessing what happened next. Boom, straight back round again. And they, within about, it was, it was, not even a couple of weeks, I think. We were back where we started pretty much. And I remember seeing logs from their, um, some of their endpoints months and months after the, after this where there were still pockets of it. So lots of things happened here, some of which are down to silos for sure, some of which was not truly understanding what was going on. And I, I thoroughly believe now that they've, they've got to a better place but you think if a, a big bank with a huge security team can't do this properly, it's hard. Um, so here we are talking about how to do it properly.
So let's go to the RCA. So super high level, how do you do this thing? Um, you need your squad. And we'll talk about who needs to be in the squad in a minute. You need to perform the analysis. Um, depending on the size of the incident and the impact really will help drive how long this thing is going to take. If six months down the line, you still don't know what happened, you've got bigger problems, frankly. Between one and three months is about right. I wouldn't go any shorter than that if it's something you really want to dig into, especially if you've got, as you should have, a big cross-functional team of folks working on this. Document, document, document. Remember the mega RCA. Document, but also do something. Um, you're designing your solutions, and then importantly, you need to be testing those solutions and making sure that they're not actually having a, a new knock-on effect. Um, another common way of getting out of a, a bad situation is the good old knee-jerk jerk solution, um, where you put something in place that actually strangles you somewhere else, or indeed doesn't work. So spending a bit of time on this matters, even though I think for a lot of people, they, they think initially, I don't want to be part of this, it's going to take too long and it's gonna be boring, and it's gonna take up too much of my time, and will we ever do this, and lots of questions. But um, these things can actually be quite fun, especially if you are a kind of, a kind of solutionary mindset and you want to solve these problems long-term um, and look at them from a strategic point of view as well as a, um, a more tactical point of view. Okay, back to my friend, Mr. Einstein again. This is the importance of cross-functionality when you're setting up your squad. So you should have a bunch of different folks in the team. Security and IT certainly should be involved for a security incident, but you also need to make sure that you hear from representation, represent, words, representatives from um, the impacted areas of the organization. And indeed, it may be that third parties come into that as well depends how, how open you want to be with, with the situation. But certainly you have to understand not just what happened, but what that meant for your organisation. Really, really important that individuals are in the room who have the authority to implement solutions. The authority piece really matters because you can sit there all day long otherwise deciding how you can fix this thing, but you can walk out of that room and there are competing priorities and then all of a sudden this thing is not top of everybody's list because they'd rather just forget about the incident and let's move on. So that authority is key. Um, the best people to kind of run the show, I said before, ideally not somebody who's, who's been emotionally involved with the situation is a good thing. If you are lucky enough to have Six Sigma belted folks in your organization, fantastic. They are the people who should be doing this. Um, I've seen them done very well with even a great program manager, someone who's, who's very organized, someone who's senior enough to have authority or, or has been given that authority and um, has good chasing skills and keeps people honest as far as the things that they've agreed to do. Um, regular meetings should be at least weekly and I would say at least an hour, probably two. Um, and this is where having a someone who's super organized, making sure that the minutes are well documented and you will spend some good time whiteboarding as well, hopefully. Um, even in our wonderful distributed world that we live in, scribbling all over a Zoom is great fun. Um, but getting making sure that's captured. And importantly, you can be creative in your analysis. This doesn't just have to be sitting there sifting through loads and loads of log files trying to figure out what happened. Ideally, that should, that stuff should have been done up front before you get to this. Um, but there are a whole bunch of different tools that you can use to to really identify what the problem is. And um, just a free bonus on this one. <laughs> Sometimes what people think the problem is, in fact, quite a lot, it's actually not the real root of the problem. Um, and it can be uh, it can be very easy to find the first reason and think, OK, cool, we're there. Let's just fix that. And then you don't go any further. So. When I say get creative, you can really kind of push the boundaries of, of why could this have gone wrong and what's happened. So up front, you need um, you need to understand what's happened. Ultimately, <laughs> that it sounds stupid saying it this way, but if you don't get what's happened, you can't really understand why and what you need to do about it. So things like you see on the screen here, I'll just call out a few because I'm sure you're reading. Um, when did you first find out? Probably isn't actually when things went wrong, or certainly when they began to go wrong. Um, the impact, the importance of having those who are, those who are impacted in the meeting is really, really key. Um, 
what happened? If it's a cyber attack, then how did they get, get in, do we think? Um, what sort of vectors did they use? What did we do to try and fix it? And did that work? Because um, having a look through processes is really important here. If you've got lots of playbooks in place, then that's, that's awesome. Playbooks are really good. Um, if you've got some automated security in place, brilliant. But making sure you understand you know, what was done, was that our standard process? Did it work? And if it didn't, where, where didn't it work? Um, and that will be a, a, a good area to start exploring because not every incident is cookie cutter, for sure. And I've seen, again, many times, run it, you run the process and it's the thing that you didn't expect to happen is the thing that's caused it. So um, tweaking things like processes and playbooks will come off the back of this, for sure. So yeah, having that timeline, figuring out what, what happens, who was impacted, what did we do, did it work, and you know what did work what didn't work start with that and that will give you um certainly a place for the conversation to begin um one small thing i was actually talking to a friend of mine yesterday um who was just started off an rca i was talking to him about this talk and he said oh this is quite interesting um they are currently looking at something that went pretty wrong for one of their customers and as they're going in to gather their evidence it turns out that the logs they need have been overwritten because um, it was eight days ago and the logs overwrite at set day seven. So um, please, 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 please love your logs. Like look after them, keep them somewhere, make sure they're accessible. Um, sometimes it can be difficult if you've built a really big, complex solution like that storage can be really expensive. But um, if you can't understand what's happened because the logs have been overwritten, then a lot of this all falls down. OK, so we're in the meeting now. It's probably a Zoom call right now, depending on where you are in the world, but not necessarily. Um, there are a whole bunch of different tools and methods you can play with as part of this. So um, one of my favorites is the five whys. And maybe it's because I, in, I, <laughs> I like channeling my inner petulant four year old. Um, and this isn't just a case of sitting there going, why, 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 why? It can be use, a useful way of really thinking about why something's happened. Now, this isn't perfect, the five whys. Sometimes you need six, as an example. Sometimes you'll get there at four. Sometimes it will lead you to a place where you think you found enough of a cause to stop. So my recommendation is actually you run this multiple times and think about some of the other whys. You might find you end up with like a cascaded whys rather than just boom, 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 boom. This is a super high level of, of what a five whys could look like. Um, nothing to do with cybersecurity, although possibly, you know, ultimately you've lost your kingdom because you lost your battle. Um, one of your warriors, your best one, happened to have uh, lost his horse because the horse fell over when his shoe went because there weren't enough nails to stick them on properly. A small thing can cause a massive challenge. Um, and we know this, you can apply this to lots of things in, in, in life and certainly in cybersecurity. Uh, I think one of the biggest challenges for defenders especially is that you, know, you, you, you have to have your eyes on everything. An attacker has to find one way through. So in this case, that's very true. Not enough nails equals loss of the kin kingdom. But there could have been other reasons here as well. So I think the important message here for five wise is to understand that five isn't necessarily the golden answer. It, it's, it's not an exact science, but it can be helpful for sure as an exercise. And actually it can be quite fun. Um, and the answer isn't because I said so for those parents out there. Um, another one you can look at is the fishbone diagram. Um, so the Ishikawa diagram is another name for it. This is a causal diagram um, where again, there's a lot of drawing involved in scribbling to, to look at the kind of the sub causes of different things. I can give you an example here. This is used quite frequently um, in in manufacturing, I would say, to look at defects, but it can also be used for a cybersecurity event as well. Um, less petulant than, than sitting there shouting why, why, why in a room. Fair, but also um, a good way of thinking about the different areas that can be related to uh, to an effect or an event. So I stole this straight off of fishbonediagram.org. They've got loads of different ones on there, but this is just a way of looking at it. So here we've got the, the server was down um, over here on the right hand side. There are a bunch of actual areas of cause here. So 
uh, what was the method of, of, of coding on there, the different policies we had, uh, technology that was in use, blame the antivirus software somewhere down the line, it's probably right. And then uh, other issues that can come into that interplay as well. So it's a good way of kind of looking at causes and sub causes that really drive to one big event. Generally, what you'll find is this. It's not always that we ran out of nails and therefore we lost the kingdom. In many cases, there is a perfect storm situation. Any of those one things that are somewhere in the in the cause on their own maybe would not have been have, have had the same outcome. But when you stick them all together, all of a sudden you find that actually this is why um, we've ended up where we have. And again, having having done enough of these, I've seen this a lot. So don't fall into the trap of, of thinking that the root cause is just a point in time or a thing that someone did. Blame them. Don't blame them. Like I say, it's normally there's normally a whole bunch of things contributing to a situation. So spending enough time on this to understand what contributes to your perfect storm is really important. OK, so you've got you've got your now documented what you think has happened and what's caused it. Designing the solutions, uh, again, is can be a really fun exercise because this is our you know, cross team designing together, looking at what do we need to do to change this? How can we do our best to prevent something like this happening again? So it can it can span a load of different areas, processes, reconfiguration. Um, you might need to redesign some of your tools a little bit. Training can often be part of it, or changing even the way that you train can be part of it too. Um, for our security friends watching this, the good old security awareness training uh, can be a little dry. Can be a little dry. So, uh, and also, you know, the world's changed a lot in the last twelve months. Some things just need an update and a refresh. You may also find that the good old silo has been a cause. Often that can be the case. So. Improving collaboration between teams is a is a really good output for, as a solution from an RCA. Um, don't tell my boss, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have to buy another security product. OK. Um, and also <laughs> that side, it might sometimes, but like vendors commonly will say, OK, right, you come to your RCA, you pretty much need to buy our thing. Um, that aside, when you're designing your solutions, please test them. I know that sounds really obvious, but sometimes the solutions are going to create a new issue, especially if they're done quickly as a band aid. That becomes a permanent solution. It's not always ideal. All right then. Now we're off to the gotchas. Anyone's old enough and <laughs> in the UK. Uh, from a long time ago, you may recognise this trophy, which was from Noel Edmonds Gotchas. So it was a real trophy given to people that he would try and wind up. That's not what we're going to do now. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So here are some things I've seen go wrong. Here are some of the impacts. And again, I know this is quite a wordy slide. So um, I actually mentioned this in the synopsis and I know we've had it earlier as well. The RCA team should never just be security and IT. For even for a cybersecurity RCA, it really shouldn't. You need to have more people. You have to understand what happened. You have to understand the impact. Um, you need to hear from people personally about what that impact was to them. Because um, this is a people process at the end of the day. This isn't just something that's done on paper. Um, it's certainly not a giant spreadsheet that gets you a dinner for strange reasons. You, you need to be able to understand really from a, a human being what this meant for them um, so that then you can work together to help to help solve it so that's really really important also if you don't have the right people in the room you're just not going to be able to even assign owners or consider what those solutions should be so that could be a real problem um, back to my friend who was in the situation where the logs have been overwritten you, you need to have the right information in that timeline if you don't have it you cannot really identify the true causes of what went wrong uh, and I've seen again repeatedly with even big breaches where as part of the remediation stage, things have been wiped. They've lost all the logs. They haven't had time to grab forensics. It's hard to really understand what went wrong. So if you don't have that, you can't fix it. Accountability is really important. Um, 
everything should have an individual owner and everything that individual owner should agree and be accountable to to implement that action again obvious stuff project management kind of 101 but you don't have that you're not going to get the change that you need determining the solution before the rca is completed back to banking with bank face um it it likely won't fix it and you'll probably get some new ones and then the good old oh well it's not a priority anymore because um people have short memories um they'll they'll get a nice reminder of it when the problem comes back so you have to make sure these things are prioritized and yeah you, you can absolutely do have a severity order or a prioritization matrix around them business impacts will have totally come into play but if they keep getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back um guess what einstein's got a message for you okay so avoiding the gotchas um right people impacted stakeholders absolutely vital to your success have the right data um, ensure that you've got an rca manager whether they are six sigma belted or a great pgm or someone who's just everyone you know everybody knows is super organized that is going to make sure that the actions are followed up on and they have the authority to make that happen um, visibility tracking there's a ton of different project management and action management tools out there um, make sure you have that top of mind make sure you make it easy for people to digest and I know we haven't really talked about it too much until now but an executive sponsor for your RCA process is really important because they can help with that authority piece and they can also help with the prioritization so and if you can get if you get a friendly executive on side then all the better a bonus item for your viewing pleasure. RCAs don't just have to be for bad things. Um, you can actually run this process for things that have worked well. And you think, well, hey, we'd like to repeat that. So this doesn't have to just be like, oh, my God, everything's gone wrong. If you've had a great success in be it in security, be it in technology, be it in your life, I don't know, whatever, you can use this process the other way around. Um, you'll see here that these words are pretty much the same from one of my earlier slides. So understanding how come this has been such a great success? How can you do it again? Uh, are there solutions you need to put in place? How do you basically take this process and run it the other way? So they're not always a bad thing, but I would say um, get good at them first before you, you run down this road. But it's certainly an area to think about too, as RCAs aren't just around um, catastrophic failures or disasters. So some takeaways, um, don't R RCA all the things, really don't, you don't have to, but it's the right things and with the right people is key. Executive support matters for a whole host of projects. It's really, really valuable here. Love your logs, love them like they're your best friend. Smash those silos, take RCAs as an opportunity to really, really collaborate with people across your organization. Don't see it as some sort of weird blame witch hunt, it shouldn't be. It should be an opportunity to really collaborate with us with other people rcas are definitely a commitment to continuous improvement and please don't send people for nice dinners for rcas that will never be read really important there are a ton of resources available um there's just a few there fishbone diagrams great we, i nicked some stuff from them earlier and gave them credit the american society for quality or asq have been around since 1946 um, so definitely predating us breaking things with with, uh, <laughs> with security products or indeed having a big malware incident or indeed a data, data breach happening. They've got some amazing resources on their website. Um, Think Reliability is also very good, but there are lots. So loads of places you can go and read. Um, obviously, if you want to go down that Six Sigma route and really get into this thing, go do that. Um, but ultimately, use these as a tool for positive change. I think that's the biggest message for this here. Um, don't think of it as like, oh my God, we need to go do the RCA. The RCAs are a good thing. Do them properly and you will see amazing benefits. And finally, if you'd like to stay in touch, this is me. Um, I am safe sex with a C on Twitter. Um, same for LinkedIn. And if you're interested in the place that I work at, it's wonderful, exameme.com and they're on Twitter too. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoy the rest of the events. Um, it's been a real pleasure being part of it. Thank you.